Gemara today at the bottom of the Afnun Amit Beis, and the Gemara continues a discussion in the Gaya to the question, the mitzvah or the Aveda of the Levim to sing in the Beis HaMikdash at the time of the Karbonis, what was the main Aveda? To sing with their voices or with the musical instruments? Bepeh or Bekeli? So the Gemara now brings that it seems to be a Machlaikis Tanoim. Omer Av Pope, Ke Tanoi. This is a Machlaikis Tanoim. The Tanan, we're at the top of Nanalov. The Tanan, we learned in our Mishnah as follows. Who were the ones that were playing the musical instruments in the Beis HaMikdash? Avde Kayanim Hoyu. These were the servants of the Kayanim. They were not, they were Avadim Kananim that uh, worked for the Kayanim. They would come and play the musical instruments. Divrei Rab That's Rab opinion. Rab Yaisi Aimer. No. Mishpachas Beis HaPegorim or Mishpachas Beis Tzifario. These were Mishpachas of Yisraelim. They weren't Levim. These were Yisraelim that had these names, these families. Umi Amum Hoyu. They were from this place that was called Amum. And the reason there was these families, Hoyu Shahoyu Masin Lukohona. They were very Meyuchistic families that you knew for sure that they're kosher to get married to Kainim. And this was the Kainim chose from these families to get married to them. So they were the Mukhatanim with the Kainim, and they, they were the ones that would play the musical instruments in the Besam Mikdash. It was the Levim themselves that played the, the musical instruments. The Yidin were puzzled to do this. It was the Levim's Aveda. They had to play it themselves. Nusra the Gemara says, so right here you see, Lechayre, clearly a Machleikis that we said before, my love. So don't you think, Baha Kamifliki. The argument here is about this point. What's the main Aveda of the Levim? The first opinion, Rab Meir, that says that Avodim were the ones that played the instruments. Kesavar ikeshire bepe. So he holds the Levim's Aveda is to sing with their voices. The musical instruments is just to accompany, to make it nicer. So therefore the Avodim could do it. Mandam Levim are you? And then the opinion in the Braiser, Rab Chanina ben Atignis, that said the Levim themselves played it because Kesavar he holds ikeshire bekeli. The main Aveda, the main shire is to do it with a keli, to play with musical instruments. So the Levim themselves had to do it. No, so the Gemara says it's, it's a good Hasbir, but the problem is the middle opinion of Rabbi Yaisi is not explained. But is this a good, good Hasbir for the Machlaikis? Rabbi Yaisi, but if so, the question is going to be Rabbi Yaisi, my Kesava. What does Rabbi Yaisi hold when he says the Avodim did not play it, the Levim didn't either, it was Yisraelim that played it? So what does he hold? If Rabbi Yaisi holds that the main shir is with the voice, so the kalim is not part of the Aveda, so they're not full Avodim Nami. Why wouldn't Rabbi Yaisi agree to Rabbi Meir that even Avodim could play the musical instruments? If Rabbi Yaisi holds that the shir has to be done by Kaili, so if so, Levim in Yisrael Mloi, he should hold like Rabbi Hanina, that it has to be done dafka through the Levim. So what's the pshat of Rabbi Yaisi's opinion? This doesn't explain it. Ella, so therefore the Gemara says a different shot. The Kula Alma, everybody agrees. Ike Shire Bepe. The Shire, the mitzvah of the Levim, their Aveda is to sing with their voices. And that's the Psak Din. If you, the, that, that, that is the main Shire of the Levim. Regarding the musical instruments, what is their Machlaikis? They're arguing about a fact of matter. How did it happen? Mar Savar, one opinion is, this is what actually happened. And the other opinion is, this is what happened. They're re- recounting the history of what happened. There's a machloikis of what, what occurred there in the Beis HaMikdash. No, but the Gemara asks, if, if that's the machloikis, in other words, they're not really arguing about what the main Aveda consists of. Everybody agrees about that. They're just arguing about the facts. So, the, the mission wouldn't bring this up if it has no relevance on Lacha Lamaisa. What is the nafkimina of this machloikis of what actually happened? And for the Gemara, the Nafkemin is as follows. Lemailen miduchen leyuchsin ulemaiser kamifligi. What they're arguing is about those that were standing on this platform. Duchen is a platform. When those that got up on the platform to play the musical instruments, could you rely on the fact that because they're there on the platform of the Besamikdash playing the musical instruments, that they could be elevated to rely on their yichus, <coughs> that they have a good yichus, in other words, even if they were Yisraelim, to know that they have a good yichus, to get married to a kayin, so could you rely on that or not? And also regarding Meiser, regarding Meiser, to know that this person that was there on this platform playing the musical instruments, could we rely on the fact that he's a levi, to give him the Meiser, the, the Meiser edition for the levi? That's what the relevance over here is. And the Gemara explains the Machleik is here. Man, doma, vodem, the one that says that these were avodim that, that uh, played the, the kalim, 
Ein Mailen Miduchin Liyuchsen Velayla Meiser. So someone that was playing the musical instruments, you can't rely on that, not for Zichas and not for Meiser. They weren't Levim and they weren't even necessarily Yisraelim. Avodim would play there. Mandama Yisrael Oyu, so not Rabbi Yaisi's opinion, the middle opinion. Rabbi Yaisi says that there were Dafka Yisraelim and there were these Miyuchas Digim Mishpachas that played over there, the, the instruments, Kesavar, so he holds, Mailen Miduchin Liyuchsen. You could elevate, you could rely on those that were there on this duchan, on this platform, for their yichus. Avalayla meiser. But they were Yisraelim. You can't rely on them being Leviim to give them the meisras. Mandama Leviim are you? And then Abchanine ben Antignis that says that they were Leviim, Kesavar, Mailen, Miduchen, Bein Leyuchsen, Bein Lemeiser. That someone that's there playing in the, with the kalim on this duchan, you can rely on that, that he's a, that he's a Levi and he's a Meyuchis, so both for yichus and for meiser. That's the relevance of their machlekes. But the basis of their machlaikis has nothing to do with whether it's Bekeli, Bepe, everybody else, the main Aveda of the Levim is to sing with their voices. Now the Gemara comes back, this whole discussion began with a machlaikis between Rabbi Yesi by Yehuda and the Chachamim, whether the Chalil, whether blowing with the flute is Doi Cheshavos and Yontif or not. And before the Gemara brought that Rabbi Yesi said that this whole machlaikis, whether it's Doi Cheshavos or Yontif, is only regarding the actual shear that they sang during the Karbanis. And therefore, the Gemara got into a whole discussion. Is that part of the Aved of the Levim or not? But Rav Yosef said, no one's going to argue regarding the singing that they sang for the Simchas Beis HaSheyeva, which was during the night before they poured it on the Mizbeach. Then, that was just for Simcha Yaseira. That was just for added Simcha. That's for sure not Deich HaShavas. That's what Rav Yosef said. So now the Gemara brings another opinion that argues with this. So the Gemara... Um, Rabbi Yirmiyeh bar Abba. Rabbi Yirmiyeh bar Abba said, Machloikis, the Machloikis of the Chachamim and Rabbi Yisib bar Yehuda was Bishir Shol Sheyeva. It was actually regarding the singing and the playing the musical instruments for the Simchas Beis HaSheyeva that they played all night. The Rabbi Yisib bar Yehuda Savar, Rabbi Yisib bar Yehuda's opinion is, Simcha Yisaira, even this added Simcha, even though it's not part of the Aveda by the Karbin, Nami Deiches HaShabbos, it also pushes off Shabbos. The reason is, Rashi here says, the whole Isser of playing the Khalil, the flute, is not an Isser Minatayra. It's Isser Mid Rabbanon, because you might come to be Misak and Mona, but Minatayra, there's no Isser. So in the Beis Mikdosh, because it's only a Shvus, and for this added Simcha, so the Rabbi Yisrael Bar Yudh says it's Mutter. Rabbanon Savri and Rabbanon Old Simcha Yisera, Enadech is a Shabbos. This Simcha, since it's not Avedah by the Karbanis, it's just for the added Simcha, no, they did not push off the Shvus, it's not Deich Shabbos. Aval, Bashir shall carbon when it comes to the shear that they sang and they played with the instruments by the carbon itself. Divri Akel Avedi, everybody agrees it's an Aveda, the Deiches a Shabbos. And therefore it does push off Shabbos. So he's, in other words, Rabbi Yemiya Baraba is arguing Rabbi Yosef in two points. Sai is arguing when he gets to Simchas Beis Hashayeva, that Rabbi Yosef by Yehuda holds that it is Deiches Shabbos. And Sai is arguing when he get to the Shear during the carbon. Rav Yosef said that that's where there's a machlaikis, and Rav Yirmiyah Ba'ab is saying is, no, there there's no machlaikis. There everybody agrees that it is going to be Deich Shabbos. So Meisvei, the Gemara asks a question of Yosef's opinion. It says clearly in another b'raise, the same machlaikis, but with a different lashon. So in this b'raise it says, Shir shal she'eva, the song that they sang, this is what they, all the instruments that they used by the she'eva, for the, by when they were drawing the water, as an introduction for drawing the water, Deich Shabbos, this pushes off Shabbos. Divrei Rabbi Yaisi by Yehuda. Mechachamim Ayimrim. Af Yamtuf in a Deicha. That even Yamtuf it's not Deicha. So in the lashon of this Brais, it clearly says that they're arguing about the Shir Shul Sheyeva, not the Shir that they sang during the pouring of the wine by the Karbanis. To Yufte the Rav Yosef to Yufte. So this refutes Rav Yosef's Pshat and this Machlekes. So the Gemara is an Aleme. Now let's go to another point here. Bishir shall sheyevu the pligi. So now based on this, since we have a clear brayse that says that they're arguing by the shear of the sheyeva, so that's where the machlekes is. Avol bishir shall carbon. But when it comes to playing the instruments during the the carbon itself, when they actually poured the wine on the mizbeach, over there we should say divri akoyel deiches shabbos that everybody would agree that it is deiches shabbos, like Rabbi Yirmiya Bar said. And if so, Lamet, have it to the Rav Yosef Betarti. So this would refute Rav Yosef's opinion in two points, also regarding the shear of the carbon, where Rav Yosef said there was a machlaikis. Shall we say that over here everybody agrees that it is Deich Shabbos? So it refutes Rav Yosef's opinion in this as well, because the Brice said only by Shishul Shayeva they're arguing. 
So the Gemara says, no, this Braise doesn't necessarily refute Rav Yasef's opinion in that. Because I can say, Amalach Rav Yasef, Rav Yasef would tell you, Pligi Bishir Shal Sheyeva. The Braise is saying that they're arguing about the Shir of Sheyeva. But for who are the carbon? Really, they also, they also argue whether playing the instruments by the carbon is Deich Shabbos or not. But the Kamifligi Bishir Shal Sheyeva, the reason why they argue, the Machlaikis was regarding Shir Shal Sheyeva, Lahidiyacha Koyche de Rabbi Yaisi. It was to show you how far the opinion of Rabbi Yaisi goes when he was matter, Rabbi Yaisi by Yehuda. How far his opinion goes when he was matter to use the musical instruments on Shabbos. That even for the Simchas Beis HaSheyeva, which was not part of the Aveda of the carbon, it was just the Simcha Yisera that they had before, that even that, Nami Dochi, is also the Lech Shabbos. In other words, it's, it's really they're arguing about both. They're arguing about singing and playing with the musical instruments by the Shir Shul Sheyeva. They're also arguing about playing the musical instruments when they pour the wine during the carbon. It's bringing the Machlaikas regarding the Shir Shul Sheyeva because it wants to show you how far the Heter of Rav Yasef by Yehuda goes. So therefore it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily refute that part of what Rav Yasef said. But now the Gemara is going to ring from our Mishnah, which will refute this part of what Rav Yasef said as well. So the Gemara continues, but for Ha Ketani, we learned in the, the Mishnah, the, the, in the beginning of the Pedic here, so what did it say? Zehu Chalil Shal Beis HaSheyeva, this is the flute of the Simchas Beis HaSheyeva, She'ein Edeche Loyes HaShabbos for Loyes Yomtev. It does not push off, not Shabbos and not Yomtev. Why does the Mishnah use the term Zehu? This is. So the Gemara is Medaik, Zehu De'ein Edeche. It's only this, only the Simchas Beis HaSheyeva that doesn't push off Shabbos. Avol de carbon deiche, but for the singing using the flute by the carbon is going to be deiche Shabbos. In other words, what you see in our Mishnah is that there's a distinction. We're, we're distinguishing between the, the using the flute for simchas beis hashiyeva and using a musical instrument by the carbonus. So now, Mani, according to whose opinion is this? E name it Rabbi by Yehuda. If this is going to be according to Rabbi Yehuda by Yehuda, you can't make this distinction. Ha Omar, Rabbi Yehuda by Yehuda clearly said in the Brisa that was quoted before, Shir Shal Sheyeva Nami Deicha. He holds that even play, even by the Simchas Beis Sheyeva, you can use a flute on Shabbos and Yontif. So there's no chiluk according to him. El Olav Rabbanon. So it could only be according to the opinion of Rabbanon that say that by Simchas Beis Sheyeva you can't use the flute. And according to him, the Mishnah is saying, only Zehu, only there you can't use the flute. But for the shear of the carbon itself, you could. Say if so, Vityufte, the Rav Yasef, Betarti, this refutes Rav Yasef's opinion in two points, even regarding this point here as well, regarding the shear shal carbon. Rav Yasef said that there's an argument by shear shal carbon, but here from our Mishnah you see that even the Rabbanon are maida, that when it comes to the shear shal carbon, it is going to be Deich Shabbos, Tiyufte. So it refutes Rav Yasef's opinion in both points. So the maskana of the Gemara is that by the Simchas Beis HaSheyeve, there's a machlaikis, whether it's Deich Shabbos or not. By the Shir of the Karbin, for sure, everybody agrees that it is Deich Shabbos. So the Gemara, so now the Gemara brings the sources of this whole machlaikis we had before, regarding what is the Ike Shir by a Karbin. Is the Ike with the voice that they sang, or is the Ike with the kalim, with the instruments that they were singing? What's the source of their machlaikis? My time with the Mandoma Ike Shir What's the source? Of the Mandama that says that the main mitzvah is the singing with their voices. Because there's a Pasik that says, Bekli, sorry, I went down. Bekli. What's the, the reason for the Mandama that says that the main singing is Bekalim, with the musical instruments? Because there's a Pasik that says, Chizkiyo said to bring the carbon on the Mizbeach. When they began bringing the carbon, they began singing with the trumpets, with the musical instruments from David Melech Yisrael. So the Pasuk is clearly saying that they were using the kalim to sing by the carbonus. My time at the and what's the reason for the what's the source of the opinion that says that the singing is with the voices? That they all sang in one voice. They sang together. So it says that the point is that they sang with their voices. Koil. Those are the two psukim. So now the Gemara is going to explain each one of the psukim according to the other opinion. Ve'idach nami, not the other opinion that says that the shiru was bepeh, but aksiv ayem echizkiyo. In the other pasuk it says that they brought the kalim. So according to his opinion, he, he teaches that pasuk as follows. When it says in the beginning of the Pasuk they began singing, that's Pepeh. 
They began singing with their voices. And then when it says, Kli David Melech Yisrael, That's just to make their voices more gishmak, more beautiful, more sweet. So it was accompanied by the musical instruments. Now the other opinion as well. And in this postic it says that they were singing. It doesn't mention anything about the kalim. According to him, no, you, you do see a hint over here that it's talking about kalim. This is how you read the Pasik. They were singing just like those that blow with trumpets. Just like Mechatzatzrim means trumpets, it's a musical instrument. Af Mishayrim, the Lashon Mishayrim means they were singing, but not just singing, but Bekeli. They were singing, making the musical notes with the Kalim that they had over there. So therefore, you see that it was with Kalim. So here's the Mishnah where it brings you to say that the famous Mishnah regarding the Simcha that there was in the Beis Mikdash for the Simcha's Beis HaShayeva. One that did not see the simcha of simchas beis hashayeve leira simcha miyamav has never seen a true simcha in his lifetime. It's an interesting lashon. The Rebbe points out that the, the, the Mishnah could have said a direct lashon that the simcha of the beis hashayeve is the greatest simcha. Instead, it sort of says if you if you didn't see it, you may think that you saw another simcha, but you really never saw a simcha in your lifetime. So the mission is trying to point out to you that a person does experience different points and moments of simcha in his life and you think that that's the ultimate simcha. But the ultimate simcha is not that. The Mishnah wants you to know that the M is the simcha is dafka in the base of Mikdash by simcha's base of Sheyeve. And the Hasbro that it always says in Chassidus and the Rebbe brings this very often is because we sometimes mistake what the Emes Inyan of simcha is. The Emes Inyan of simcha does not come from wine or from something that's a geschmack or a good taste whether begashmi is, whether beruchni is but the Emes Inyan of simcha comes dafka from Nisuch HaMayin. The Minisa Chamayim, which represents the pure Kabbalah so from the essence of the Neshama, which is Lamayla Mitam Vedas, not necessarily the Seichel and the Gishmak that you feel, but Adarab, the absolute Bittal, that's the real source of Simcha, that's the Emesa Simcha. So any other Simcha a person experiences, if it doesn't come from this kind of a Simcha, Leira Simcha Miyamov. In that sense, so the Rebbe explains many times, so it's Shaykh to experience and see this uh, simcha of simchas beis hashavi even today if a person has the simcha that comes from this tr- true bittel so then that's the true simcha but the diak of the mishnah that it says mishalei ra the rabbi says the diak is the ra it doesn't say who the one that didn't experience the one that wasn't mishtatif the aspect of ra that's something that was only bizman shabbos and mikdash kain today we, we we don't have that level of ra to see like, like we know, it always says that any when you see something, it's it's much deeper. It touches the person much deeper. So that's the chiddush over here. The dafke then in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, they saw this level of simcha. If you don't see that, you never had this deep experience of simcha. That what? Right, right, right. right, right with yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when it came Matzi, the first day of Yantif, so Yardul Ezra's Noshim, they went down into the area of Ezra's Noshim. That was the place where the whole Simchas Beis Hashem took place. And they would uh, over there do a big tikkun. They would fix up the place, prepare it for the Simchas Beis Hashem. And there were different things they did. First, Menoyres Shalzav Ayusham. There were very tall golden menorahs there, varba sefalim shalzav berasheim, and there were four. These menorahs had four big lamps that were like these massive jugs to be able to put oil inside of them, and uh, they made they created a massive light, as we'll see here. Varba sulamis, and there were four ladders lecholechot vechot for each one of these uh, lamps that they lit in these menorahs. Varba Yiladim, Mipirche Kohone, and there were four of the younger Kainim that climbed up these ladders to go and light them. Ubi Yideim, Kadim, Shomeya Vesrim Luk, and they had in their hands these, these massive barrels that were a total of 120 Luk for all four of them, okay, divided into four for each one of them. Shehematilim, Lochal Seifel Vesefel, and each one of these Kainim would climb up with these heavy barrels and they would pour the oil into these uh, massive lamps. And then what would they use for the, for the wicks? From the worn out pants that the Kainim wore. From the worn out gartel that they were wearing. They would tear it. And that's what they would make the wicks for and then light it. 
There was no courtyard in Yerushalayim that didn't get from this light, it was so sh- bright that it, it, it didn't get uh, lit up from this bright light that there was in the, from the, uh, the Menaris over there in the Chatzah of the, of the Beis HaMikdosh. Right, so over here the Rebbe Oslo used to always bring this, that the, the point of here is that the Simcha of the Kayanim or the Yidin in the, the Chatzah of the, the Azara and the Beis HaMikdosh, the point was it should go out it should come into every private chotzer, every private chotzer of a yid in the city of Yerushalayim. Chassidim and Shemaise, how you merakt them befneim. So the Chassidim and Anshe Maise would dance over there, ba'avukos shaloyer, with these torches of fires, should be daying with their hands. So they would juggle them, right? They would juggle, they would throw it up and bring it, it would come down. As Rashi here says, and Rashi says that they would do this either with uh, four torches or with eight torches, that they would throw it up and juggle it. So this is something that's uh, brought in my modem of Chassidus to explain what the significance of this is. This wasn't just for the purpose of sawing, showing some kind of a juggling show, but there was a, a very high ruchni zegenyan over here. So the, the, the diak over here is that it says Chassidim and Anshe Maisa. Chassidim and Anshe Maisa are in a way sort of opposites. Chassidim are people that are pious, totally removed of Gashmias, and Anshe Maisa are people that are people of action. So the, the, my modem it explains that's the whole point, to bring together the Chassidim, on, that are more shaykh to Ruchnius and Anshim Aise, that are more shaykh to Gashmius, but also serving the Ebishter in Gashmius. And this is uh, over here in this juggling of the Avukis Shaloyer, it's also, you have the two opposite things. On one hand, it's, it's torches of fire. In other words, it's not a level of uh, revelation of Oyer, but it's torches. It's a very high level of Oyer that's connected to the Chsidim. But on the other hand, it's, uh, it's not one massive fire, it's many. It's, it's, it's shaykh to the Anshe Maisa, where it's divided into the details. And the juggling, the, the, so the union of Kalim, the union connected more to Gashmias. Also, this, the, the number of four and eight is explained in the Maimonim as well. The four is connected to the Daldoisius of Shem Avaya. The eight is the, the number of eight, as we always know, there's a mile of the number of eight, that it says the Gili lost at Lava is hinted in the number of eight. So all these things have significance. It was all Meram is the very high Ruchni's the Ginyanim. It's not Stam Episashow or something. And then, Vaimrim Lufnayim, Divrei Shir Visish Bacha, Shiriz Visish Bacha, they would say and sing to the Abish Shiriz Visish Bacha, the Gemara will explain what they are. And Vaalavim, and the Levim would be there as well, Bikinaidais, Binavalim, B Mitzaltaim, Bhatsaitsris, with their uh, with their harps and with their cymbals and with their trumpets, or Biklishir and all kinds of musical instruments, Bali Mispar, without any particular number. They would have many different musical instruments that they used to play there. Al Khamesh, Esre Mailas, where were they standing? On the fifteen steps. Hayyodis, M Ezra Sisral, Ezra Snashim. When you come out from the area of the Azara, coming down to the Ezra Snoshim, there were 15 steps there, that's where they would stand. Keneged, Chomish Esre Mailis, or the Chomish Esre Shira Mailis, Shebetilim. The 15 Shira Mailis of the Tilim, that's the 15 steps that were there. Sha'alem, Levi'im, Maimdim, Beklishir, that's where they would stand with their musical instruments in Vaimrim Shira, and they would sing for the Eivishter. And Bishara Elya, there were two Kayanim that were standing by the, the, by the gate. In other words, the entrance to go from Ezra Snoshim into the Ezra Sisral. That's the, it's the famous Shah, it's called Shar Niknar. And that's where the Kainim would stand. Shayyarid Mazis Yisrael, Ezra Snoshim, by that Shar that you come down from the Ezra Sisral to the Ezra Snoshim. And they had two trumpets in their hands. And that, that's where they would stand and blow with those trumpets. Kara HaGever, so when the Gever would announce that it's already Aloysa Sashachar, according to some opinions, this is actually even before Aloysa Sashachar. So Toku, Vehiriu, Vetoku. So then they would blow with their Chatzaisris, Atkia, Tru, and Tkia. And they would start going down. So the, 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 the Shi'ive, the drawing of the water, actually took place then, after the whole Simcha of the whole night, towards the morning. That's when the Shi'ive of the water took place. So they would go down and they would start going down. It was a whole procession how they went down. So they first they blew the trumpets when they were at the top of the steps and then they started going down. They came to the 10th step. Again, they blew Atkiya through Atkiya. They came down to the bottom of the steps into the Ezra Snoshim. They blew again. And then from there they were blowing with the trumpets until they came to the gate from the Ezra Snoshim going out into the Arabayas on the Mizrach gate. 
When they came to that gate that was by the Mizrach of the Ezra's Noshim, they turned around to face Maidav's side. They were facing the, the Besamikdash and the Kaidash HaKedoshim. And they said as follows, Our forefathers that were here in this place by the time of the first Beis HaMikdash, towards the end of the first Beis HaMikdash, they, they, their backs were to the Heichel, and their faces, they were facing towards Mizrech, and they served the Zod, and they bowed down to the sun. But we are turning around to the Beis HaMikdash, and our eyes are towards the Abish, towards the Beis HaMikdash. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, how you shine in Vaimrim, they would repeat this and say it twice. Anu laka, o laka einenu. We are towards the Ebishter and our eyes are towards the Ebishter. That was the procession. And then from there they went out of the Azada, they went out to the Mea Shiluach to draw the water to bring it into the Beis Mikdash. So this is the, there's actually a shtickle discussion about this in the Rishainim, in the Mefarshim, the Nigea to when they drew the water, when, when, when exactly was Kara Gever? There's two opinions, whether Kara Gever is by Aleisa Shachar, or maybe even it's closer to Netzach Hama, but according to some opinions, mm-hmm. Kara Gever is even before Aleisa Shachar. If it's before Aleisa Shachar, it could be an issue with a Psul Belina. Psul Belina is, even if it's from the night, even if it wasn't from the previous day, there could be an issue with it. But if Kara Gever means if it's uh, from the Aleisa Shachar or from Netzach Hama, so then there's no issue of Lina that it's from overnight. Upon that, so the, here, here you see how it was done, that the whole simcha was before as the introduction for drawing the water. One that did not see this simcha of Beis HaSheva, never saw simcha in his lifetime. Similar, someone that did not see the city of Yerushalayim and its beauty, never saw a beautiful city in his life. Someone that never saw the Beis HaMikdash when it was standing, never saw a beautiful Binyan in his lifetime. Which building, which Beis HaMikdash is it speaking about? It's speaking about the Binyan that Hordes built the second Beis HaMikdash. How did he build it? Others are greatest. With marble stones, which are um, white, Sheisha is uh, white, and, um, and, and, and Marmara, which is, uh, so, sorry, again, Marmara is white. Sheisha is, is more bluish or greenish. Rashi says uh, it's Ken uh, Yorik, I guess, similar to green. Okay? So, so two colors, two colors of marble, white marble and bluish greenish marble. Ikidamri, again. So again, Sheisha is greenish. Ikidamri, others say, Ba'avni Sheisha, Kuchle, Umarmara. That there was the three colors to this. There was Sheisha, which is white, Kuchle, which is uh, bluish, and Marmara, which is green. And the way he built it was, Apik Sofa, Va'ayal Sofa. It wasn't just one straight, flush uh, row of bricks that were all in the same. But it was going in and out, in and out. That's the way they were positioned. Kihechi, the Lekabal Sida. Uh, the only, he did it possibly because of the construction. It's easier for the for the cement or the the the, the sid, the, the the plaster that you put between these marbles that it should hold better. So when you position it in a way that it's not exactly straight, it it it, it will stand stronger. Pashup means that construction. He did it that way. But then afterwards, savar lemission bedava. So because it was going in and out, you had space where you can put in over there. Other so you could put in gold over there. He wanted to. He wanted to plate it with gold to make it even nicer. Amrulei Rabbanon, the Rabbanon said to him, Shafke, leave it the way it is. This is actually even nicer than plating it with gold. The Mishazi Ke'advesa the Yama. These colors of the marble, it's white and blue and maybe green also. So it looks like for the waves of water. So that was the beauty of the Binyan that Hordes built. Tanya, Rabbi Yehuda, Imen Abraisi, we learned, Rabbi Yehuda said, Mi Shalera. The Yuflustun, the Alexandria, one that did not see this place that was called the Yuflustun. It's not a place. It's actually it was a massive shul that was like this massive palace that had these rows of benches that the, the, the people sat inside to daven there. That's why it's called Yuflustun. Yu means double rows of, of benches that were inside there, and then like this was in Alexandria and Mitzrayim. Shall Alexandria, Shall Mitzrayim. 
So in that time, there was a huge community of Yidin that lived there. So one that did not see this, never saw the honor of Yidin. Amru, they had said about that time period over there in that place, Kimin Basilki Gedaila This shul was like this massive palace, Stav Lifnimistav, with rows of benches, one row within the other. Pa'amim sometimes, Shahoyuba, Shishim Riboy al Shishim Riboy, there were 600,000 Yidin there. Keflayim Kiyatsim Mitzrayim. Double the amount I mean, of, of the Eden that went out of Mitzrayim. You have the, the girs on the side, which uh, fits a little bit better. If you see if it says on the side, Sometimes there were 600,000 Yidin present there. And others say, right? In other words, 1.2 million Yidin that were there in this shul. There were 71 thrones, these huge, these nice chairs. Keneged ayin alev she Sanhedrin gedayla for the seventy one of the Sanhedrin gedayla that were there, and kolachas vaachas each one of these thrones eino pchusa me esrim veechad riboy kikrezav was made out of gold no less than twenty one riboy kikrezav which is a tremendous amount of gold for, for one for one throne it's I mean it's begashmis it's very difficult to understand how you could have so much gold in one throne. The Aruch Laner says that you have to change the gears in the Gemara. Instead of kikrezov, uh, uh, a kikre is a very big amount of gold. He says it's supposed to be dinrezov, which is a smaller coin. Either way, there were very big, nice golden thrones there. Ubime shalates, and there was a wooden bime, be'emtzi isa, in the middle of this shul. The chazna kneses oimed aleim, and the gabai of the shul stood on this bime. Va'asudrim biyodoi, and he had a handkerchief in his hand. V'kivin she'igir lanis ame. When it came to answering Amen, Hala Meinev Besuder, he would wave his handkerchief, and Vachala Meinem Amen, and everyone would answer Amen. So this is a famous Gemara, this this piece here, because it's a big chiddush. You have the Gemara in Brachas that clearly says you can't answer Amen on a Bracha unless you yourself hear the end of the Bracha. Here you see they answered Amen even though they didn't hear the end. And they they picked up with a handkerchief. There's a different different tirutzim in the Rishonim. How to explain this? One of the main terutzim is that if you're hearing a bracha and nobody else heard the bracha, just you alone, and you didn't hear that, you didn't actually hear the conclusion of the bracha, you can't answer Amin. Over here, there's many people. Someone did hear the end of the bracha. Uh, many people did hear. And, uh, and, and you didn't hear it because you're at the back of the shul. And someone's picking up a handkerchief. And that's enough. If someone else heard, you could answer Amin if you're fo- following together with everyone else. Another interesting thing in this shul is, they didn't, there was a seating arrangement. But they didn't just sit randomly wherever you wanted. <coughs> but it was according to different your, your uh, jobs that you had. <laughs> People that were working with gold had their section in the shul. <laughs> the people that were working with silver, uh, silversmiths in their section of the shul. <laughs> the ones that work with metal in their section of the shul. Tarsim bifniatzmam, the one that worked with copper, their section of the shul. Gardim bifniatzmam, the weavers, in their section of the shul. So what's the reason for this? You might think, oh, because everyone could be in his industry. So we can uh, redden during davening, chas v'shalom. That wasn't the reason. The reason was, because then, ukesha nichnas, ukesha ani nichnas sham. When you had a poor individual that didn't have employment, he came into the shul, he would see where is the section of the shul that people that work in the things that he knows how to do. And then if Nilasham, he would go to that area, Parnasasya Parnasas He would be able to find Parnasa for himself and for for his family. So he knew where to go into the shul. So this shows you an interesting thing. Yeah, it shows you that uh, even when you go to a shul, another yid comes into a shul, you have to ask, you have to interest yourself. No, was to for Parnasa, do you have Parnasa? Do you not have Parnasa? No, so Omar Abayas Abaya said, what happened? But this Massive community had a bitter end. The Kulu, all of them, Katlinu, Alexander Smaikten. They came, Alexander Smaikten, then killed them all. Others are not Gaitis Smaikten, because Alexander Smaikten was in an earlier time period. They got the word Smaikten. So, okay, what happened? My time may Yanshu. Why were they all punished? Mishum de Avri, Ahai Kra, because they were over on the Pasuk that says, that you should not go back to Mitzrayim. Vi'inu hadar asu, and they did, they came back there to Mitzrayim. So what happened? Ki asa, when Alexander Smaikten came, ashkechinu da'avakaru b'sifra. He pumped came at the time when they were reading in the Chumash, 
the, the, this week's parasha, the Teicheche. Yisa, Shem, Alecha, Goy, Merochek, that the Eves will bring upon you a nation from far that will wipe you out. He came punked when they were reading the Teicheche. So Omar, he said as follows, Mechti, let's see, Ahu Gavre, this person, referring to himself, I was traveling to Komet to Alexandria, and it was a, it's a voyage that takes 10 days. Dal a, a big wind came and picked up. And my, my boat arrived there in five days. So therefore he says that if I arrived early and I came punk then, when you're reading in this passage where it talks about the Teichach, it's a sign from heaven that, 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 that uh, you deserve to be punished. He attacked them, the Katlinu, and he wiped out this whole community. The next thing he said in the Mishnah was, the Yomtev, that on Matzi Yomtev there was a Tikkun Godel. My Tikkun Godel. When the Mishnah says the Tikkun Godel, what is that referring to? So it's not, in other words, it's not referring to the Menaitis that they put up there. It's referring to something else. What is this Tikkun Godel? Amar Abelazar, Kaisa Shashaninu. It's like this that it says in the Braise, Chalke, Chaloka that is, Chaloka Isa Berishayna. The walls of the Ezra's Nashim were just plain walls, smooth plain walls. And then, V'hikifua gezustere. And then, the tikkun was that they created these supports, and they put these porches on these supports, on these walls. V'hiskinu, and they, their takana was, Shiyonoshim yeshvis mulmaila, that the women should be on the top, on these balconies, on the porches. V'hanoshim mulmata. And the men, their simcha was below. And another b'raisa elaborates more. Taner Rabbanah, we learned, Perishayinu ha'yu noshim mibifnim, ba'noshim mibachutz. In the beginning, the way they separated the men from the women was, the women were inside the Ezra's noshim. That's why it got the name Ezra's noshim, because l'chadchila, the women were on the inside, and the men were on the outside. But v'ha'yu ba'yin l'day kalis reish. Huh? I guess in the Harabayis. In the Harabayis. Huh? Yeah? Rashi says, in the Harabayis, yeah. Not, not inside the actual Azara. But but still, because they were on the same level on the ground, they came to Kalis Reish, there was mingling. So they put the women on the outside, and the men on the inside. So maybe if the men are inside, they're not going to be interested in going out. They're on the inside. But still, there was still Kalis Reish. So then, that was a takana that they made these balconies for the women at the top, and the men were below. But how could they build into the structure of the walls of the Azara these balconies? But the Pasik says, that everything in the base of is all from the Abisha exactly the way it's supposed to be. And you're not allowed to add to the structure of the base of So the Mepharshim explained it does the problem is not the actual balconies. The actual balconies, they all was only there temporarily. Yantif, Yamatsi Yantif they would put it up and take it off after Yantif. It was the supports of the balconies that remained there the entire year. And that how could they add that? Amarav. There's a Pasik that they found in the Darshan, and then according to this Pasik, they said that it's necessary to do this. That the eulogy in the world is going to be each Mishpach separately, and this is speaking about Lasad Lava after Mashiach comes, and it's a Hespid, as Rashi says, a Mashiach ben Yosef that's going to be killed. So, Beis David Levad, Unisheyem Levad. The, the, the men, again, Mishpachas based David Levad and Nishem Levad. The men, the, the men of the families are going to be separate and the women are going to be separate. That's the Pasik. So now Omri they said, So we can learn from here Kavachayme. Oh my Lassid, if Lassid Lovish, Shais can be Hespit. So then they're the eulogizing Mashiach ben Yosef. Ain't Yet Sahara, Shailat Bem, and at that time period they don't have the Yet Sahara anymore. Amrit Tayra, the Tayra says, Anoshim Levad, Venoshim Levad, that the men were separate and women were separate. Achshav Shasukim, Besimcha, Yet Sahara, Shailat Bem. Now when there's a Simcha and there's still Yet Sahara amongst the Malachas, Kama Vakama. Most definitely, you have to have a separation and the women have to be at the top. Interesting. Okay, so that's the Gemara. The Rebbe in one Ha'ad and the Sikhah points out that there was a time period though that the men and the women were on the same level together and they weren't worried about the Yitzhahara B'chlal. And that is why Kriyas Yamsuf and Miriam sang with the, with, the, with the Shira and so on. That was even higher than what it says. It's going to be lost love and then there was no Yitzhahara at all.